Hello third year, welcome to lesson two for this week. It is again another revision lesson and today we are going to be looking at bonding diagrams and shapes of molecules. Our learning intentions for today are to understand the rules for drawing bonding diagrams and to explain the different shapes molecules can take. To be successful in this lesson, you will you should, sorry, be able to draw bonding diagrams for a range of covalent molecules and be able to determine the shape of a molecule from its chemical formula. Now, just as a quick reminder, covalent bonds are a shared pair of electrons between two non-metal atoms. The negatively charged electrons are attracted to the positive nuclei of both atoms. And as we can see in this diagram, our positive nuclei in black with our white plus sign in the middle are attracted to the nuclei of sorry, the nuclei are attracted to both the electrons of their own atom and the electrons of the other atom in this bond. Now Another quick reminder that many elements exist as molecules. Now, molecules are two or more atoms joined together by a covalent bond. In a covalent bond, each atom has a full outer electron shell and is therefore stable. Now, when we are drawing bonding diagrams, it is important to remember that only the outermost shell of electrons is involved in covalent bonding. This means that when we are drawing our diagrams, we do not have to draw any of our inner shells. Now, there are two ways on paper for you to indicate that a covalent bond is present. And the first way is by a solid line. So we can see that between these two hydrogen atoms, whether you draw them purely as a capital H to represent hydrogen, or you draw them within a circle, the solid line represents a covalent bond. The other way that we can represent a covalent bond is via a dot and cross diagram and that is what we are going to be revising today. We are going to be revising how we draw dot and cross diagrams. So before we get on to that, chemical formula is going to form an important part of today's lesson and for a covalent compound your chemical formula will give you the number of atoms of each element in the molecule. Now, what does that actually mean? What it means is, if you were to look at the chemical formula for water, which is a covalent sub substance, it has the formula H2O. Now, that tells us, that little subscript or small 2, tells us that in a water molecule, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. We can see here that the oxygen is in the middle, that's going to be our central atom and it is surrounded on two sides by hydrogen atoms. And we can see from this solid line here that those bonds are covalent bonds. Another example of this is carbon dioxide. We can see that there is C for one carbon, O and a subscript 2 to represent our two oxygens, CO2. Now, Rather than having just one line connecting our carbon to our oxygen, we have two. And that represents what is called a double bond. And I will go into more detail about that later on in our lesson. So more about bonding diagrams. Now bonding diagrams show the pair of electrons in a covalent bond. And they can be drawn by overlapping outer energy levels. They can also be called dot and cross diagrams as, usually, one atom's elements are drawn as elements. That's a mistake. That should read electrons. So one atom's electrons are drawn as crosses and the others are drawn as dots. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to the Miss McPherson in her kitchen and we are going to have a look at drawing hydrogen chloride diagram. Okay, so we are going to begin drawing bonding diagrams with hydrogen, hydrogen chloride. Now you may also know hydrogen chloride by a different name and that name is hydrochloric 
acid. Now, before we can draw the bonding diagram for hydrogen chloride, we must first know the electron arrangements of the atoms involved and the ratio of atoms that are going to make up our molecule of hydrogen chloride. So, first thing we do is we make a note of the elements that are involved. The elements that are involved are hydrogen and chlorine. So, our symbols are H for hydrogen and for chlorine it is C. L. Now that we know our elements, we then move on to our electron arrangements. Now I do not expect you to know those off the top of your head. I do expect you to know that they are on page 6 of your data booklet, so if you have your data booklet handy, flip to page 6, it is going to be helpful for the rest of this lesson. So if we're on page 6, we can see that hydrogen's electron arrangement is simply 1. And chlorine's, a little bit more complicated, is 2, 8, 7. The next question that we have to ask ourselves is how many electrons are needed? And you might be saying, Miss McPherson, electrons needed for what? It's how many electrons are needed for hydrogen and chlorine to have the same electron arrangement as their nearest noble gas. Now, hydrogen's nearest noble gas is helium. And according to page 6 of your data booklet, helium has an electron arrangement of 2. So hydrogen is going to need one more electron. I'm going to move it up a little bit just for make my life slightly easier. There we go. Chlorine's nearest noble gas is argon, AR, and its electron arrangement is 288. So chlorine also needs one more electron. It needs to go from 7 to 8, so it needs an extra 1. So we've worked out how many, sorry, we've worked out our electron arrangement, so I'll tick that off. The last thing that we are going to work out is our ratio of atoms, and here is how you do that. Firstly, we write ratio here, and we then swap these numbers over, so we have 1 and 1. This means when a molecule of hydrogen chloride is formed, we have one hydrogen atom bonded to one chlorine atom. So now that we know our electron arrangements and our ratio of atoms in the molecule, we can now get to drawing that bonding diagram. Just bear with me while I clear my board. Okay, so here is what we do. Hydrogen chloride. It is made up of hydrogen and chlorine. In one molecule, we have one hydrogen atom and one chlorine atom. So what we do is you are going to pick either hydrogen or chlorine. I'm going to start with hydrogen. In fact, I'm not. I'm going to start with chlorine. I'll show you for why. I'm going to start with chlorine. Now, when we're doing bonding diagrams, the only electrons you have to draw are the outer electrons on your atom. Now, chlorine, let's remind ourselves, has seven outside electrons, and this is how we draw our electrons in. We treat this circle like a clock face. We start at 12, put our first electron here. We move to 3 for our second electron, 6 for our third, and 9 for our fourth. Now once we've gone around the clock once, putting single electrons in, we then start to double up. So chlorine has 7, we've drawn 4, so we need to draw another 1, 
two, three. Now this one is unpaired and on its own. So this is the electron that is going to be involved in a covalent bond with hydrogen. Now if we remember back to our original lesson from this week where we revised bonding, a covalent bond is the sharing of a pair of electrons. It's a shared pair of electrons between two or more atoms. So our bonding diagram has got to show the sharing of electrons. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to draw our outside electron, oh, try it, our outer electron arrangement for hydrogen. And when we draw its energy level, we are going to draw it overlapping. Sorry, that wasn't a very good circle. We are going to draw it overlapping with chlorine. And instead of drawing it as a cross, like I've done for chlorine, I'm going to draw hydrogens as a dot or a circle. Now that these electrons are being shared between the hydrogen atom and the chlorine atom, chlorine now has eight outer electrons and hydrogen has two. So they have achieved complete outer electron shells and they are now stable. Okay, so... All right, this time we are going to do something slightly more complicated. We are going to be doing the bonding diagram for something called dihydrogen monoxide. You may know it as water. So, water from its full chemical name has the elements hydrogen and oxygen. Now, I'm not going to write out their full names, all I'm going to be writing out is their symbols. So H for hydrogen, O for oxygen. Remember the first thing that we have to do before we get stuck into doing our bonding diagrams is we need to know the electron arrangements of each of the elements involved. So, electron, I'm going to do A double R because it must make person is a little bit lazy. Hydrogen, remember, if we don't know off the top of our head, we're on page 6 of the data booth clip, has an electron arrangement of 1, and oxygen has an electron arrangement of 2, 6. We then move on to electrons needed. Remembering these are the electrons needed for each of our atoms to have a stable electron arrangement. To work out how many are needed, we look to the nearest noble gas. In the case of hydrogen, as you may remember from our last example, its nearest noble gas is helium. And helium has an electron arrangement of two. So hydrogen needs one more electron. Oxygen, on the other hand, its nearest noble gas is something called neon, and it has an electron arrangement of 2, 8. So it requires 2 more electrons. So we can tick off electron arrangement, and we then move on to our ratio. We cross these over. Two goes from being beneath the oxygen to coming under the hydrogen, and the one moves from beneath the oxygen, sorry, from beneath the hydrogen to underneath the oxygen. So, what this means is, in one molecule of water, we have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Water is H2O. So why don't we now attempt to draw that as a bonding diagram? Now, because there is more than one of each element involved, the 
because in this instance I have two hydrogens and one oxygen, to draw the bonding diagram, we must pick out the central atom. Now, the central atom is the one that you draw first and the one that goes in the middle of your diagram. The central atom is going to be the one that we only have one of. So in this case, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Because we only have one oxygen, that's our central atom. So I'm going to draw it here. Oxygen. And we are going to draw out its outside electrons. So what we are going to do... So it should look something like this. Now, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to turn oxygen on its side a little bit. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Oh, incomplete circle, guys, sorry. So here's oxygen. Now, I'm going to turn it on its side from how I drew it the last time. And I'm going to draw its two pairs up here and its two single electrons down here. What I am then going to do is I'm going to bring my hydrogens in. But remember we have one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. So what happens is we have one hydrogen atom coming in to share an electron, so to form a bond using this or sharing this oxygen atom, atom, sharing this oxygen electron, and we are going to have a second hydrogen coming in to share this oxygen electron. So this would be the bonding diagram for water. Remember, our outside electron shells are the only ones that we draw. We don't need to draw the full electron arrangement, only the outside shell. And they will always overlap. We've got to show off really well these shared electrons. And these shared electrons represent a covalent bond. Okay, for our next example, we are going to be drawing the electron arrangement for ammonia. Now, ammonia, which you may not be familiar with, is made up of two elements and those two elements are nitrogen and hydrogen. Our electron arrangements, again, if you've not got it open, I advise having page six of your data booklet open in front of you. Our electron arrangement for nitrogen is two five and our electron arrangement for hydrogen, as we have seen in our past two examples, is one. We have an electron arrangement, and now we work out electrons needed. Again, these are the number of electrons that nitrogen and hydrogen need to form a stable electron arrangement. For hydrogen, we should already know by now that it only needs one more. It wants to have two outer electrons like helium does. And nitrogen, which is next door to oxygen, which we've seen in our last example, also wishes to look like neon, which has the electron arrangement 2,8. So nitrogen requires three more electrons. So our ratio this time, when we cross these numbers over, is three nitrogen atoms, Try that again this week first. It's one nitrogen atom, three hydrogen atoms. So, how do we draw this one? Once again, we need to bear in mind which is our central atom, which is the atom that is going to go in the middle. And in this case, as, is, as was the case with our oxygen, it is the element that we have one atom of. 
So we are going to draw the outside electron out there. Let's start again. We are going to draw the outer electron arrangement of nitrogen. It has five through one, two, three, four, and a pair up here. So we have our nitrogen atom. And there are three hydrogen atoms involved as well. We have three lonely electrons and they are going to pair up with three hydrogen atoms. How we are going to do this is we are going to draw one hydrogen atom coming in here, forming a bond. Second hydrogen atom coming in here and forming a bond. And a third hydrogen atom coming in here and forming a bond. This is our ammonia molecule. The bonding diagram for ammonia. So just very quickly guys, I noticed there that um, I said we're going to have this nitrogen atom coming in here and that nitrogen atom was in fact a hydrogen atom. So bear in mind that in ammonia there is one nitrogen atom which is a central atom and it's bonded to three separate hydrogen atoms. Okay, our last example of bonding diagrams that we are going to do just now is going to be something called carbon tetrahydride. Now you are going to come into contact with carbon tetrahydride later on in your third year, but you are going to call it new thing. Don't worry about too that too much just now. It's just for future reference. Carbon tetrahydride is also called methane. Now, the elements involved, they're quite easily worked out through the name. We have carbon and we have hydrogen. Our electron arrangements, I'm writing the word arrangement this time, for carbon and hydrogen are Carbon has the electron arrangement 2, 4, and hydrogen has the electron arrangement 1. So we have our electron arrangements. Before we skip to ratio, we've got to work out how many electrons, electrons are needed. And I will say it once again. That is how many electrons are needed for carbon and hydrogen to have full outer shells. Hydrogen wishes to have two outer electrons like helium, so it needs one more. Carbon wishes to look like neon, which has the electron arrangement 2 8, so it needs four electrons. To work out the ratio of carbon and hydrogen atoms in a molecule of methane, we have to swap these numbers around. So we're going to have one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. So let's think how this would look. So the first thing we draw is our central atom. And our central atom is the atom that we only have one of. In this case, it's going to be our carbon atom. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe the board down and I'm going to draw it. Bigger than the ammonia one. So, methane, one carbon, four hydrogens. So we're going to draw our central atom first. Our central atom is our carbon. So we are going to draw. Going to draw over here. Wonky circle for our outer electron shell. Now carbon has four. Outer electron shells, remember, if we are not sure, we must be sure, so we must always refer to page 6 of the data booklet for these arrangements. So, carbon has 4, 
Now, it requires four electrons to have that two, eight noble gas arrangement. It is going to get four electrons. It's going to share four electrons with four hydrogen atoms, allowing those hydrogen atoms to have their ideal helium arrangement, and it will help carbon have the same stable arrangement as neon. Here is how that is done. Up here, we have a hydrogen atom coming in. It forms a bond by sharing an electron here. We have a hydrogen come in here, forms a bond, shares an electron. A third one in here, shares an electron and forms a bond. And a fourth, shares an electron, forms a bond. We have the bonding diagram of carbon tetrahydrate, or more commonly known, methane. Okay, so guys, thank you for sitting through that for me. If the sound wasn't great on that, I will be uploading the bonding diagram videos uh, as individual files, and I will link the folder to that in the post. Well, in my usual post for this for for the weekly work. Now, what I do with guys right now is pause in the video here and attempt drawing the bonding diagrams for hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen sulfide, phosphine, and silane. Now, later on in the week, I will post the answers to this exercise, and you will be able to self mark that. If you are having any problems, I will be posting in. Um, I will be posting some consolidation work so there will be another opportunity for you to practice drawing bond, bond and diagrams. So as I said, pause the video here, draw the four diagrams and you will have the opportunity to correct these sometime later on this week. So now that we have discussed bond and diagrams and how they are drawn, I would like to introduce you to the diatomic elements. We met those in second year, and there are seven of them. there are seven diatomic elements present in the periodic table, and they are held together by covalent bonds. Now, if we split that word diatomic up into its two parts, we split it into di, which means two, and atomic, which simply means atom. So, in a diatomic element, there are two atoms of the same element and they are held together by a covalent bond. Now those seven diatomic elements are fluorine, chlorine, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, bromine and iodine. You may remember this by using the mnemonic fancy clancy always harry nothing but ice or alternatively I bring clay for our new house if you have any spare time this week and you think that you can come up with a better mnemonic to remember your diatomic elements, my inbox is open and I would look forward to seeing any clever attempt at remembering the seven diatomic elements. So I'll say again, the seven diatomic elements on the periodic table are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. They are different from other elements because they exist as two atoms joined together by a covalent bond. So just to emphasize a little more, diatomic elements are made when two atoms join together by a covalent bond. Here we can see them on screen. Now I'd like to look in a bit more detail at the covalent bonding in a couple of different um, diatomic elements. Now we're going to start off with hydrogen. It's, it's a more straightforward one. It only has one electron in the atom. And it needs one more electron to have a completely full outer shell. So what happens is it forms a covalent bond to share an electron with another hydrogen atom. This creates a single bond. 
and the two hydrogen atoms form a hydrogen molecule. Now it's represented either by H2 or H single bond line H. Now that term single bond, what that means is a covalent bond has been formed, so the sharing of electrons, and a single bond is when one pair of electrons are shared. So what I would like to emphasise is that single covalent bonds are formed between hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. Those are our diatomic elements where single bonds are formed. Now, I'm going to skip chlorine. In fact, I'm not. I'm going to show you. So chlorine has seven outer electrons and it needs one more to complete that full outer shell of eight. It can share an electron with another chlorine atom, creating a single covalent bond. So like hydrogen, one shared pair, this pair here, they are shared between both the atoms, so that creates a single bond. Now, oxygen is slightly different. Oxygen requires two more electrons to have a completely full outer shell. Now, if you remember back to two slides ago, I refer to oxygen as a diatomic molecule. So, it is joined by a covalent bond to another oxygen atom. However, it needs two electrons. So what happens is it shares two electrons with another oxygen atom. Now this creates what is called a double bond. And two pairs of electrons are shared between two atoms. Now this can be represented by O2 or O double bond. So these double lines represent two separate pairs of electrons being shared. So we've covered then hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and oxygen and that leaves us with nitrogen. Now if oxygen forms a double bond, before I move on, we think we know where I'm going with this. We've done a single bond, a double bond and we're now moving on to a different type of covalent bond. So nitrogen has the electron arrangement 285 and it needs three more electrons to have a completely full outer shell. Now it can share three electrons with another nitrogen atom to do this. And when those three electrons are shared with another nitrogen atom, it creates a triple bond. Now it's still two nitrogen atoms joined together, so it's still N2. But when we draw it out with our solid lines, to represent covalent bonds, we have to draw three separate lines to represent those three pairs of electrons that are being shared by these nitrogen atoms. So that actually takes us quite neatly on to the shape of molecules. If you are feeling a little overwhelmed, if you feel the need to go and look back over that material or listen to me say it again, please feel free to do so. If you take a break, take one now and then we will get started on shapes of molecules. So the bonds that are formed between atoms give them a distinctive shape. So when we are drawing those bonds and diagrams, the way that those electrons are shared, the position of those bonds gives a molecule a very distinctive shape. And then the shape of the molecule will depend on how many bonds it forms. Oh, I skipped a wee bit there. Don't want to get too overexcited. Now, the shape depends on how many bonds it has, but it's also very important to realise um, when we are looking at these that our molecules are not flat. They are actually 3D and it's very can be sometimes quite difficult to visualise that because we draw them on paper or on my whiteboard. It's quite flat and you will then imagine them to be completely on a single plane. But in fact, they're 3D and we need to learn how to draw them that way. So we are going from bonding diagrams, which we practiced drawing earlier in the lesson, and we are going to be drawing um, what's called a projection diagram. And those projection diagrams show the 3D shape of a molecule. So just how do we do that? 
Now, when we're drawing our 3D molecules, we use different types of line to represent the direction that the bond or the atoms are pointing at. So, when we draw this triangle shape, this represents a bond almost coming out of the screen towards you. So, if you imagine something coming out of your screen straight towards you, that is how, that is what, sorry, a triangle represents. Our dashed line would represent a bond going into the page away from you, so almost out the other side of your screen. And the flat and the continuous line represents a bond which is in the same plane as the page. It's going across your screen on the same plane. So if you trace your finger across your screen, that is the direction that that bond is going in. So, if you feel like you have to, I will take a quick note of this. Um, it should be in your note anyway, but if you feel like taking it down, if it will make you feel more confident, help you remember it, then do so now. Pause the video, make a little note, but once again, don't feel like you have to. So if these are the rules for drawing um, your bonds to represent a 3D structure, we have to look at the different 3D structures that molecules can take. Now the different structure depends on the formula. So we're going to start off with a linear shape. Now molecules that take a linear shape tend to have the formula either xy or x2. Now what that means is xy would represent something like hydrogen chloride, HCl. That would have a linear shape could also represent hydrogen fluoride, which is HF. That would have a linear shape. Our X2s would represent our diatomic molecules. H2, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2, O2, N2. Those would all be linear in shape. Our second shape is V-shaped or angular, and they tend to be molecules with the formula X, Y2. That could be um, so it's X, Y2, and it's also X, 2, Y. So it's molecules such as water, H2, hydrogen sulfide, H2, S, and what some of you may assume is that the V-shaped or angular sh um, shape of molecule would also apply to carbon dioxide, which is CO2. However, that's not the case because carbon dioxide is actually the exception to the rule. So where you would think that it was V-shaped or angular, carbon dioxide is actually a linear molecule. And it is linear because if you remember back to our um, molecules page before where we showed carbon dioxide, we showed it as a carbon in the centre connected to two oxygens. But it was connected to those two oxygens by double bonds. And it's those double bonds which alter the shape of that molecule. So CO2 is linear not angular. Our third shape is pyramidal and it is represented by molecules with the formula XY3. So that could be things like ammonia, which are NH3, phosphine, which is PH3, and similar formula molecules. Our last one is tetrahedral, it is XY4. That is things like methane, CH4, um, it's also carbon tetrachloride, which is one carbon surrounded by four chlorines, and a molecule called silane, which is one silicon in the middle surrounded by four hydrogen atoms. So let's look at these in slightly more detail. So in front of us, I have the linear molecule HF. So you can see the H would be represented by this white ball and the F by the green. So 
HF is a completely linear molecule and because it has this continuous line, it exists on a single plane. So our linear molecules exist, have bonds going only in one direction. Angular v shapes are quite similar. They have molecules on the same plane. They have one centre atom and the two surrounding atoms coming out at an angle. Now our py pyramidal um, shaped molecules, they, this is when we start to see the 3D aspect of our projection diagrams coming in. So we have one hydrogen which is on the same plane as um, your screen and it's coming out of or it's bonded to the nitrogen sorry on the same plane as your screen we would have this hydrogen coming out of the screen towards us and we would have this hydrogen coming out of the screen away from us lastly we have tetrahedral so if you imagine carbon on the palm of your hand it's got one hydrogen coming out the top one coming out the side hydrogen coming towards you and a hydrogen coming away from you at the same time so one point now one point down one coming away from you and one coming towards you What I would like you to try and do now is to draw the projection diagrams for hydrogen chloride, water, ammonia and methane. So have a go at drawing those and let me know how you get on. Again, I will be posting the answer to those um, later in the week and I will be posting some consolidation videos and consolidation um work and more diagrams for you to attempt drawing if that is something that you feel you need to work on later in the week. So give the video a pause, draw the projection diagrams with the 3D, um, 3D bonds coming towards you, away from you, so triangles and dashed lines and see how you get on with those. So that brings us to the end of our second revision lesson for the week. Our learning intentions were to understand the rules for drawing bond diagrams and to also explain the different shapes that molecules can take. I really hope that by the end of this lesson you guys are able to draw bonding diagrams for a range of different covalent molecules and hopefully we have come some way in being able to determine the shape of a molecule simply by using its chemical formula. Now remember, remember, remember that carbon dioxide, although it is CO2, it is not angular, it is linear. It is the exception to our rule. As ever guys, my inbox is always open for any questions, any concerns that you might have. Please do not hesitate to get in touch. Um, if you need anything extra, any explanations, any extra support, please know that there is always someone who will be available to answer your questions and that even though you're working from home, even though you seem to be working on your own, you absolutely are not and there's always someone around um, for you to speak to, whether that's myself or Mrs Grimes or your own chemistry teacher. All you have to do is reach out and we'll be there to answer all your questions. So I hope you have a lovely and safe week and I will hopefully hear from you throughout the week and if not, I look forward to seeing all your work um, and marking all your work again and I will speak with you all next week for our future lessons. Bye third year.